She was busy with her work when a man in a suit entered the office, a member of the fraternity. Without further ado, he pulls out a bullet and asks the woman to investigate, as a member of the fraternity is being killed by the owner of the bullet. The woman takes the bullet and looks at it carefully, for the slightest clue. Suddenly there was a laser pointed at the woman's head and she was shot in the head. The killer shot through the window on the roof of the building opposite, hoping to make a quick escape from the office and then headed straight for the elevator. The man didn't run away but took a running start and then ran at high speed jumping out of the building. While in the air he killed one by one his enemies with a deflecting bullet. The man then got a phone call that turned out to be a decoy and he was killed. Some time before, the man with binoculars who was aiming at the man in the suit was named Cross, and he was also a member of the fraternity. But for some reason, he committed treason. Scene changes, Wesley is an accountant employee who suffers from severe anxiety. Because of his weak and pessimistic character, his boss always nags him until Wesley's emotions overflow. And every time it happens, he takes his medicine to calm himself down. Wesley also has an ignorant friend but chooses to keep quiet so that he can live a quiet life. Plus his finances are bad. One day he went to the supermarket to do some shopping, and a beautiful woman appeared out of nowhere. She was named Fox, and immediately told Wesley that his father, whom he had never met, had been murdered on the roof of the building a few days earlier. Wesley hadn't seen his father since he was born and this strange woman must be playing tricks on him, and suddenly Fox pulled out a gun. It turned out that Cross was right behind him and instantly becoming an ambush site. Fox pulled out her gun and the fight went on fiercely. Wesley had never seen anything like this and when he saw his chance, he ran away. However, Cross arrived in a truck and drove straight at Wesley. As Wesley gave up on his life, Fox suddenly appeared, opened the car door, and saved Wesley. Cross again chased Fox and Wesley until a shootout broke out. Fox asked Wesley to take over the steering wheel and started shooting Cross. Wesley and Fox managed to escape from Cross's pursuit, but then they saw a herd of police blocking their way. But for Fox it was no big deal and managed to get past the police. Wesley woke up in a warehouse, surrounded by several killers and an old man named Sloan. He doesn't listen to Wesley's nonsense but gives him a gun and tells him to shoot the wings off a fly. There, he explains that Sloan has caught the wrong person. Just then, a gun was put to his head. Faced with a threat to life, anxiety sets in and all movements begin to become hasty and slow. But Wesley managed to shoot the wings of the fly. Sloan tells Wesley that his anxiety is not a disease, but a superpower. It comes from his father's genes and Sloan is the leader of the fraternity. He invites Wesley to join the fraternity in good faith. The next day, when he woke up, Wesley thought it was a dream but realized that it wasn't a dream when he saw a gun. Then he went to check the balance in his account. The numbers in it shocked him. Wesley went to work as usual, his boss showed up again, but this time, instead of restraining himself, Wesley fought back. Later, he hit his friend with a keyboard for having an affair with Wesley's girlfriend. It was an incredible moment for Wesley to finally turn his life around. Wesley got into the car with Fox, left his job and immediately headed for the fraternity's headquarters in a weaving factory, where new members had to undergo a brutal training program. Wesley doesn't yet realize how serious the situation is. Wesley is tied to a chair and beaten four times before he finally passes out. He was awakened by cold water and began knife training again. Facing the brutal other members, Wesley's palm was stabbed by a knife. Fortunately, there was special medicine in the organization that could be administered to recover various wounds quickly. The third level of training is shooting. As Wesley approached the shooting target, he was stunned to discover that it was a real human body. Fourth, training with Fox where Wesley had to dodge obstacles and outrun Fox on the train, only to be severely injured once again. Fifth, a training, where Wesley had to pick up an iron from weaving machine in several attempts, but also failed. Wesley finally couldn't take it anymore and was fed up with the whole training. He was then beaten up by Fox until Wesley said he wanted to know who he was. Then Sloan takes him to his father's room, who is a great member of the fraternity. Wesley finally starts to get serious. He wanted revenge, and he started training even harder, breaking his bones, but it was no big deal. And so, day after day, his skills progressed by leaps and bounds, and his training with Fox also progressed by leaps and bounds. The last, and most difficult, part of the graduation program was to make the bullet turn and hit the target. To trigger Wesley's power, Fox used herself as a barrier. Wesley took a deep breath and fired the bullet, which then passed through Fox in a perfect arc and hit the target. Wesley was pleased with his success and Sloan took him to the weaving machine, to inform him that the fraternity's targets all came from this weaving machine. In the past, a weaver suddenly discovered that there was a mysterious language hidden within the threads. The special code translated into the names of the people to be killed. Wesley couldn't believe it, it was too much. A machine can decide whether someone live or die. Following the machine instructions, 
Wesley is given the first task of killing someone. Fox joins him on his mission. However, Wesley hesitated. He still didn't understand why he had to kill this person. What was his fault that he had to be killed? Fox sat quietly and recalled her own experience of witnessing her parents being murdered. When she was a child, and when she joined the fraternity, she found that the name of her parents' murderer had appeared. But the fraternity members failed to kill the murderer, which then led to the murder of her parents. So Fox was convinced that the names on the weaving machine must now be the plan of fate. Then Wesley went back on his mission and there was no doubt. On subsequent missions, Wesley and Fox became partners, and no matter how difficult the task, with a close cooperation, they managed to kill the target. One day, Wesley went home to get something, and was shocked to see that his friend had been having a blatant affair with Wesley's girlfriend. As soon as he entered the house, his girlfriend started cussing Wesley out as a loser. Fox at the door, unable to listen any longer, walked in, gave Wesley a kiss in front of Wesley's girlfriend, and they left hand in hand and suddenly Wesley saw Cross, and then shot at each other and the bullets from both sides collided. Cross runs away and Wesley rushes after him to a building where Cross is in front of him. Wesley was very nervous and suddenly there was movement behind him and he turned around and shot. But it turned out to be his colleague in the fraternity. Before his death, he said the rat bomb to Wesley. Before Wesley could look at Cross, a bullet whizzed by and struck Wesley in the arm. He woke up and was already lying in the infirmary. The bullet was removed from his arm and after a detailed investigation, it was discovered that the bullet was made by someone living in a monastery and was clearly a clue left by Cross. Knowing that it is an invitation, Wesley chooses to go there to avenge his father's death. Sloane then gives the task of killing Cross and gives the task to Wesley. After Wesley left, Sloane gave Fox another list of names to kill and the target was Wesley. After making threats, the old man agreed to arrange a meeting with Cross at a train station. Wesley and Fox hid in the shadows without knowing that the old man would be the bait. When suddenly the old man began to run away, they rushed after him, while Cross watched quietly from the train, which then made Wesley realize that there was Cross in the train, and Wesley began to chase into the train. On the other hand, Fox had separated with Wesley. Inside the train, Cross's search begins and he is suddenly grabbed from behind by Cross, and Fox tries to help him from outside the train. Wesley and Cross faced off and a shootout ensued. Fox then crashed into the train, but the driver chose to use the emergency brake and that was a big mistake. The train starts to derail and all the cars start falling. When Wesley was about to fall, Cross saved him. He didn't understand why Cross saved him, but the opportunity arose, and without hesitation he pulled out a gun and shot Cross. At the same time, the entire cars began to fall, and Cross pulled Wesley with all his might. Then Cross revealed a fact that Cross was Wesley's father. Fox appeared from behind and admitted that what Cross said was true, because Wesley was Cross's only weakness and he would never kill his son. Wesley knew that he was being used, he broke the glass and fell with his father, and suddenly Wesley woke up in his father's house and realized that it was the old man who had saved him. The old man explained that Cross did not want Wesley involved in this life, and all this time Wesley had been targeted by the fraternity. The beginning of the betrayal occurred when Cross learned that Sloane's name appeared on the weaving machine but Sloan refused to die and began making up targets for personal gain. Cross was framed by Sloan. Wesley finally realizes that the real devil is Sloan. Then Wesley begins to devise a plan to attack the fraternity headquarters using rat bombs. Wesley arrived in a garbage truck carrying thousands of rat bombs, which quickly spread throughout the building and exploded. Wesley then went inside and killed many members of the fraternity. Wesley walks into Sloan's office and Wesley is surrounded by some of the best assassins. Wesley proves that Sloan was meant to be a target. But Sloane then provides other information. It turns out that all members of the fraternity have been targeted. Sloane says that if he violates his mission, no one will die and he will be a savior for everyone. Sloane asks the assassins to shoot Wesley but Fox then kills all members of the fraternity even herself. Wesley then loses Sloane but he has devised a plan to trap Sloane, using the same method as his father, shooting from a very long distance and the movie ends. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. What movie do you want next? Just comment below. Have a nice day.